So this is the engine. The way the flow is is from that end to this end. Uh, the other side of that wall is where the air conditioning air goes in. Uh, that first section is the uh, low pressure uh, compressor. What it, what it is is there's a compressor on that end with a shaft that connects all the way through to back here. And there's a turbine back here. And this turbine drives that compressor. And then there's a shaft over our shaft where this compressor, which is the high pressure compressor section, is driven by this turbine, which is right here. And this, this high pressure compressor and turbine shaft is, sits on top or, or around the other shaft, so they're independent. So when you're running uh, the unit, the low pressure compressor and turbine goes at 3,600 RPMs. And that's what's put when you're generating. The high pressure compressor and turbine operate between 8,000 and 10,000. RPM. So part of how you change load is the speed of that uh, high pressure compressor. And that high speed is when you hear a jet engine, that whine noise, that's because of that high speed compressor that makes that whine noise. One of the things about an axial compressor is you don't ever want air to go backwards. So the way this thing's set up is that the output of that first compressor, there's some little doors right inside this uh, ductwork right here. So when you're starting up, those doors are open, so you're just dumping all the air. And then the first five rows of the stationary vanes in here rotate. That's what all this is about. And so what they do is rotate uh, parallel to airflow so they're not compressing. And then once you're up and running and you're using all the air, they rotate back in the normal operating position. So one of the things that you got to be careful about is making sure all those are, none of those little level arms are bad and all everything's intact. These are the fuel nozzles. The way the fuel nozzles work is there's 30 of them. And there's a, a combustion combustor in there, which is like a bunk pan. Anybody ever had a bunk tank? Yeah. Yeah, it's got a hole in the middle. Well, it's the same principle. So you've got all the fuel nozzles around the outside, and the hole in the middle is for the shaft to go through. This is the cooking part of the tour. So anyway, these fuel nozzles, um, what I didn't mention before, I don't think, is that we actually, this is natural gas, and this is actually water. So you inject water with the gas. And that's one of the other ways you control the NOx, the nitrous oxides. The uh, gas turbine is most efficient when the fire is the hottest, but it produces the most nitrous oxides when the fire is the hottest. So what GE did is they came up with a way to uh, put a, a water curtain around the nozzle so you get the input, of the heat input effect, but you cool the flame. And so these units inject water for that. The combined type of unit does it a different way. It does the same principle, but it does it without injected water. The other thing is that these units have what they call sprint, which is where you can inject water into the compressor. And that, if the temperature is not too hot, that'll make up the difference in that uh, dense air so you don't have to run the air conditioning most of the uh, So that's water injection. So one of the things that happens inside here is you got a bunch of hydraulics, you got high pressure water, and it'll leak. So over time, this will get a lot dirtier. This is really looks nice right now. And so we, you know, we rotate crews that are responsible to clean up engine. Sometimes you just got to be in here cleaning the thing up. Uh, you have any questions?